Hmm. That's a lie. Here we are again looking at the new old stock Dimension L566CX. While it is in excellent condition, sitting for so long was bound to create some problems. If you haven't seen it already, be sure to check out the unboxing and first startup of this computer in the previous video. Upon further use and examination of this system, the long post issue started to become more blatantly obvious. Randomly, this error pops up. If you happen to catch it, this and a keyboard error also appeared in the first startup footage, but they flashed by quick. Usually, the slow power on indicates the CMOS battery is dead, and with the random errors, I was pretty sure this was the case. Thankfully, since this motherboard is quite far ahead of the destructive nickel cadmium battery days, this is a simple matter of popping out the standard CR2032 lithium button cell and popping in a new one. The next issue is to take care of the optical drive. Initially, I didn't think anything was wrong with it and thought it wasn't showing up before because of a BIOS configuration issue. However, after some testing, it became obvious something else was wrong with it. I looked around the parts hoard for an optical drive to test the IDE channel, hoping this issue was isolated to the drive that came with the system. As you can see, the post now recognizes the CD-ROM drive, and as a bonus, also goes by much quicker without a dead component plugged in. Unresponsive IDE drives usually hold up the power on tests, so between this and the dead CMOS battery, there was quite a significant delay while this computer posts. With that replacement drive showing up and functioning, why not throw it into the case? The front bezel has to be removed first to access the 5.25 inch bay, as well as the two 3.5 inch bays, which mount drives with a snap-on plastic rail system. Dell was even nice enough to include the two extra needed for the second 3.5 inch bay. Amazing! Next to the extra rails are the two screws used to mount the hard drive. Here, you can see how the rails snap into the screw holes on the drive. All things considered, it's not that bad of a way to go for a rail mount system. While here, I decided to remove the hard drive in order to get ready for making an image of it for backup purposes. It's only held in with two screws and a metal tab that needs to be bent out of the way. Before going any further, I wanted to look a little more at the old optical drive. Introducing my tech system, a Dell Vostro 410. It's big and a total mess, but has been a loyal bench tower for many, many years. Hooking up the optical drive, we can see there appears to be no signs of life here either. The only optical drive here is the Vostro's hidden ASUS one. From this diagnosis, it looks like the original Samsung drive came dead from the factory or just couldn't handle being unused for a couple decades. While the tech system is hooked up, I figured now would be a good time to make a backup image of the hard drive. This isn't really necessary, but I would like to preserve the OEM install of Windows 98 because I'm weird like that. For drive imaging, I use Macrium Reflect Free Edition. 
not sponsored. For this installation, the image is only going to be about one gigabyte. One great thing about Reflect is the ability to mount the images it makes as removable media, so exploring the image confirms the data has been backed up. With this out of the way, let's reassemble the computer and finish setting it up. Now, we can go into the BIOS to set our date and time and check overall configuration. This footage was before swapping the optical drives, so it still shows nothing there. The replacement does now show up. Given the hardware and what software came bundled, this dimension was intended for home office, business, and early internet browsing. The Celeron processor is definitely not known for its performance, but that doesn't mean we can't have a little fun between the super serious business documents and emails. The integrated Intel graphics of the 810E chipset contains a whole 4 megabytes to work with. Much better than nothing, but next to nothing compared to today's standards. There are free PCI slots available for graphics cards to be added. Like most, I spent an unholy amount of time in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Back in the day, my tower was a slot 1 Celeron build running at 333 MHz with 96 MB of RAM, a 4 GB hard drive, and even a 4 MB AGP card. So going back in time with this system is an interesting comparison. I still have that tower, though it hasn't been turned on in about 15 years. Maybe that will be another video. As you may have already guessed, there are no problems running this game with minimal slowdown in busy areas of parks. Unsurprisingly, Grand Theft Auto 2 also experiences no issues running. The only running issue here is from the cops. Now that was some BS. Test Drive Off-Road 2. Another game I used to play a lot. As the installer states, this title is best played on 3DFX Voodoo cards, something I never had before. So this is exactly how it looked all those years ago. Absolutely terrible. It was still fun to me back then though. However, this camera bobbing is kind of making me sick now. To move along with 3D titles, let's try Hydro Thunder. At a super low res software mode, it looks awful. Switching to high res software looks much better, but clearly is not playable. This actually looks a lot worse in person, but that's fine. At least it can be played. While this may sound a little unrealistic, Unreal Tournament is actually quite playable on this hardware at lower resolutions. As the readout at the bottom indicates, the FPS is generally staying around 30 with ups and downs. I am very much not used to playing this with a messed up ball mouse. None of these demonstrations are meant for any real benchmarking, rather it is just amusing to see this system start up and play them. It probably goes without saying, DOS games would play very well on here, leaving most of the configuration down to expansion cards, though the 566 MHz processor would present some speed issues I'm sure. Not all was going so well. Eventually, Windows 98 did what Windows 98 does. It broke. Impressively, all it took was restarting once for this issue to show up. I did want to go ahead with a couple more game demonstrations, but maybe that's a wrap for this video. With the image I made earlier of the hard drive, troubleshooting doesn't have to be so difficult or take very long. I'm just going to take the lazy route, reload that backup, and be on my way. With this turn of entirely unpredictable events of the normally bulletproof operating system, I'll end it here. Thanks for watching.